Welcome to this video about spiral galaxies. Now you might be aware what a spiral galaxy might look like, but are you aware of the differences between a barred spiral galaxy and a normal spiral galaxy? Well in this video I'm going to kind of go through the differences between the two and it's mostly the central region really of these galaxies and what that means for the dynamics and things like that and how they kind of behave. So before we do that Let's kind of go back to the Hubble classification or the tuning fork for galaxies. Now on the right hand side of that you have spirals which has a few different pathways there. So along the top you've got your normal spirals, along the bottom you have your barred spirals and sometimes you have like one in the middle which is kind of in between the two. They don't quite have a full bar and they're not quite a normal spiral so they kind of they, there is sometimes another one there. And the evolution of these spiral galaxies occurs from right to left. So they start at, let's say, for example, look at the top one, you've got your SC. That would be an early type spiral. So they would be fairly blue because they've got young blue stars. They've got a lot of gas content and their spiral arms are fairly open. As they evolve, their arms get a bit tighter, more wound. They lose gas because it's get, it gets turned into stars, basically, and they get a bit redder. And they evolve that way and kind of go towards the ellipticals. So... For all spiral galaxies, this includes the bar spirals, the normal spirals, um, your star formation typically occurs in your spiral arms. They have a reasonable amount of gas content, or they have a lot of gas content in them. As they obviously evolve and age, that gas is depleted because it's turned into new stars, but generally they have good amounts of gas in them. And they have populations of young blue stars. And again, if it's an early type one, it'll have more of those and it'll appear bluer. But spiral galaxies are generally going to have star formation occurring and you're going to have bluer stars as a general rule. And that's the same for barred spirals as well. Now, elliptical galaxies kind of sit on the other side and they are classified purely by shape mostly. So they don't evolve from right to left, left to right. Um, the classification is, is mostly down to shape, which can relate basically to your orientation that you actually view them. Um, now the ellipticals and the spirals are important for a bit later on in the video because they are going to relate to our central region in the spiral galaxies which might sound bizarre but they could be like miniature versions so let's look at the normal spirals then so the normal spiral galaxies they have a central bulge in them it's called a bulge because it's basically like a spherical bulge in the center of the galaxy um, so normal spirals have that and it's centered right in the middle of the galaxy which is why it's called the central bulge. Now here's an example of one which is zoomed in. So this is IC2051. And in the zoomed in section, you can see the bright central region. This is a region which is kind of separate to the disk-like structure. So spiral galaxies, they're kind of orbiting in a disk-like shape. So the stars and the disk are orbiting kind of in a common direction. It's fairly thin, so it's a disk-like structure but the central bulge is more spherical so when you look at it from the edge you should see that the bulge kind of sticks above and below the main disc so this is a yeah a more spherical shape compared to the main disc of the galaxy now there are two main types of this central bulge in these spiral galaxies you can have this spherical which is the more classical one so it's a more spherical shape, which we saw kind of on that edge on galaxy. And then you have a more disc like one. And both of these behave differently. They have different properties, which we'll kind of break down and have a look at now before we relate that to the barred spirals and the non barred spiral galaxies. So the spherical or classical central bulge, they are typically populated with old red stars. Their movement in that central spherical bulge shape is random so then there's no kind of net rotation to that um, bulge the stars are almost thought of, of moving um, randomly and there's no gas in there to form new stars which is why the population is is mostly old red stars so you've kind of got these structures that are yeah, not undergoing star formation old stars and they're randomly moving now, uh, interestingly, that is actually very similar to how elliptical galaxies are. So elliptical galaxies, they don't have any star formation occurring in them generally because they don't have any gas. So if they've got no gas, they can't actually form new stars. They, ha they have a population of old red stars. So they shouldn't have 
young blue stars because there's no star, star formation occurring, no gas. There's also no kind of net rotation to elliptical galaxies. The, the motion of the stars is somewhat random as well. So these spherical central regions, the central bulge in some of these galaxies, is almost comparable to the larger elliptical galaxies. And there are a few other things that relate to it as well, like the the um, surface brightness relationship is fairly similar as well. So if you look at the brightness of them and compare it to the central region, there are comparisons there to elliptical galaxies. Now, the other type is a more disc-like central region. So this is no longer spherical in shape. It's a bit more, it's flattened. And it does have some rotation. So the stars in that central region will be rotating in a disc-like structure, similar to the disc structure of a spiral galaxy, so the outer parts of the spiral galaxy. So you could have a central region, which is a bit more like that. So it has a net rotation. It has younger stars, so you've got bluer stars in there because they're younger. And it has gas, and it's that gas that's actually feeds that recent star formation so you can actually think of these central disc-like regions to be like miniature spiral galaxies so you can have ones which are like little elliptical galaxies and smaller spiral galaxies in the center so yeah these are basically similar to your spiral galaxies you've got star formation you've got gas you've got populations of young blue stars so again quite comparable and also to mention they do have that net rotation which the spiral galaxies have as well so let's then have a look at the barred spiral galaxies now these barred spiral galaxies have a central bar so they just still have a central bulge right in the center but extending from that to the spiral arms they've got this kind of almost straight bar like structure which the normal spirals don't have now, the interesting thing there is that about two thirds of all spiral galaxies have a bar. The Milky Way is a barred spiral galaxy. So we're actually inside of a barred spiral galaxy at the moment. Now, that's not an image of the spiral of our spiral galaxy because we're inside it. We can't actually get an image. So it's a, a rendering really of what we would expect it to look like. And we've got plenty of images of barred spiral galaxies. So we kind of know what it should look like. But our Milky Way has this bar in the centre as well as its central region, which then the spiral arms attach to at the end. So how does it actually fall? Well, there's going to be speed differences between the gas. So the gas that's closer in is orbiting at a different speed to that further out. You get density waves forming as well. And basically that causes this kind of um, structure. It's to do with the 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 orbital motion of the stars and gas closer and further out and it ends up forming this kind of structure. Now that might not make a lot of sense but if we compare that to traffic so if you're traveling down the road and you have cars braking further in front all the cars then brake going back and actually causes a density wave going through the traffic and it's a similar sort of mechanism that happens in galaxies it's what causes the spiral arms and it's also thought to be responsible for forming that central bar as well and because two-thirds of all galaxies have got this central bar it's thought that it's likely a, a consequence of the evolution of these density waves that occur so if you think about the cars on the road as stars in the galaxy as they get kind of close or the the I suppose the, the stars aren't necessarily breaking, but it's to do with gravity. But they get closer together and they get further away. And you can think of it as traffic going down the road, really, getting into a bit of a traffic jam. And that's that density wave. So in the centre of both of these types of galaxies, your barred spiral and your normal spiral, you have supermassive black holes. And we expect that most galaxies have got these. There are some possible case where that's not the case but most have got these supermassive black holes which are hundreds of billions of solar masses so these are enormous objects at the center so why is that actually important specifically for barred spirals as well actually is that these bars can actually funnel gas towards the central black hole so it can actually feed the black hole the way that they work so gas from the outer region of the spiral galaxy kind of get funneled in towards the black hole and in doing so, it actually feeds star formation as well, because you're feeding gas into the central parts of these galaxies. 
you get stars forming. So the consequence of that actually is that barred spiral galaxies are more likely to have these disc-like bulges in the centre because you're feeding gas in. You get the stars forming, they have the gas, you're going to have some kind of net rotation as it's kind of fed in as well. So barred spiral galaxies are more likely to have these sorts of structures in their centre. Uh, thank you for watching and if you enjoy then you can check out some of the other videos.